meinen Freunden. Wie geht's? Bewegung. On the move. All power to the people. Brothers, sisters, comrades. I thank you all for your time and attention here at the Rosa Luxemburg Conference. On the move. Long live John Africa. Thanks to you all. Aus de Todestrafe. Hier spricht Mumia Abu Jamal. Rosa R. Rosa, standing in for Mumia Abu Jamal, who is being horrifically restricted by the state, I am Goldie, his daughter. Francis Golden for Mumia Abu Jamal. We gather today over 140 years after the birthday of Rosa Luxemburg, the brilliant thinker, writer, activist, and revolutionary whose memory still burns bright around the world. As I've thought of her this season, I wondered, what would she think of the Occupy Wall Street movement here in the U.S.? Having read some of her political writings and her journal entries from prison, I have an idea of her thinking. I think she would reply in her typical boldness. This is a movement. If anything, it's the beginning of a movement. For movements lead to revolution or betrayed. They lead to apparent reforms that often end up in setbacks, especially for the working class and the oppressed. That's because capitalism co-opts movements. They buy off leaders, and when that doesn't work, they bring the iron hand from out of the velvet glove and crush them. Wow, I'd reply and add, but it's actually a leaderless movement of mostly unemployed students, to which Rosa would say something like, Aha, I see perhaps two possible outcomes. The bourgeoisie media depicts the entire movement as misfits, sex fiends, drug addicts, and then they crush them. Or, B, the police spies among them identify the personalities and offer them lucrative jobs in high finance or some other sector, and once bought off, they use them as a wedge against their former comrades. Wow, Rosa. That's a pretty grim picture, I'd say. It's called class war, brother, not a dinner party. And as many of these activists are unemployed, capital can spare a few shekels to buy off the most advanced layer. And finally, I'd say, Rosa, why are you so down on students? These kids are doing some remarkable things. And Rosa would reply, Students can spark a movement, as they've done all around the world. But can they carry it through? Can they engage the workers, the teachers, the tradesmen, the postal workers, the transit workers? If they can't, then they can't really tap into the social force that has the potential to stage mass strikes that shuts down production. And that's all Wall Street or any capitalist really cares about. That sounds good, Rosa. But these students, to which she'd interrupt. Jamal, come on, don't be a dummkopf. Students schmudens. First of all, if they're graduated, they're not students anymore. They're unemployed workers. Secondly, years ago, when you were a young guy, there was a vast students movement, anti-war, pro-black rights, pro-prisoner rights, anti-imperialist, etc., etc. Where are they now? Didn't they all get bought off? Oh, and aren't many of them these kids' parents? To which I'd shut up. I hope you've enjoyed this mental exercise done with the highest regard and respect for a socialist, intellectual, and revolutionary, Rosa Luxemburg. I chose this topic which is a subject of endless fascination by much of the population because it has taken the country by storm. In the beginning of September 2011, no such movement existed. But the events of Tahir Square in Egypt, the rising unemployment, which left many college students unemployed, and the growing social inequality in American society, as shown by the obese well-being of Wall Street and the bankers, converged in a movement to show deep dissent with the state of affairs. When young people, most using cell phones and other instant media, began calling for a protest gathering at the iconic bull sculpture, 
known worldwide as the symbol of the rampaging markets of New York's Wall Street, hundreds then thousands swarmed into the streets. And like that, a movement was born. Within days, the call was met by crushes of students, most of them angry at the bottomless greed of the economic elites. They started the We or the 99% chant, and again, within days, similar occupations sprang in Boston, Philadelphia, San Francisco, Oakland, Los Angeles, and beyond. Within weeks, over 100 city centers, home of the moneyed elites, were occupied. But what really kicked them into gear, into high gear, was when cops in New York blithely sprayed chemicals into the faces of young women doing nothing more than marching with an anti-capitalist banner. Carried via YouTube, it reached millions and inspired more to join the protest. Rosa, I'm convinced, would have loved it. As I write this year's message from prison, it's the first time I've done so without a death sentence. That's entirely due to you and people like you who've stood with me through thick and thin. Danke, vil vil danke. To all of you brothers and sisters in Germany, in France, in Spain, in England, in Canada, and yes, in the United States for making this happen. As you know, the struggle continues. This battle ain't over until we're all free. Mal used to say, the journey of a thousand leagues begins with one step. We have taken this step. We are all one step closer to freedom. Long live Red Rosa, Freiheit. Free the moved prisoners, free Leonard Peltier. Dismantle the prison industrial complex. Prison and government officials are trying to censor and silence Mumia Abu-Jamal. I stand as one of many Americans who believe that there is tremendous value in his voice being heard. I am others will fight to make sure that both his voice and his body are free. Thank you. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm convinced. Before I die, he's going to be free. <laughs>